Hey everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Uh, we got here from Great Lakes, this is their Alberta Clipper. Uh, we'll see how this compares to their Edmund Fitzgerald, which is a little bit bigger beer than this, I think. Uh, this is only, uh, let's see what it's got here. It says it is a, uh, does it say? 7.5%, so it's right up there too. 40 IBUs listed right here, so it's got, and this is on the upper label, guys. 7.5% alcohol by volume, 40 IBUs, and down here on the bottom, it's got 7, 14, 16, and that's an enjoy by date. Not a big fan of that, y'all know that, guys. This is, these enjoy by or best by dates are, are for the brewers. Uh, I mean, it gives them a longer shelf life. That's what it does. It doesn't tell us when this beer was put in the bottle. Because a lot of breweries are doing a three month shelf life, four, five, six, seven, some of them even doing a year shelf life. Uh, and, and, and on this one being a 7.5% porter, this is going to keep for a while. I mean, it, it's not like an IPA or a double IPA where uh, we really need to have it as fresh as possible. This one's going to keep. So uh, they're wanting you to have it by uh, July 14th of 2016. And I would say this beer will probably keep a little longer than that. But I would still rather see the bottle on date. Let me decide when I want to enjoy it by. That's the hot tip. So uh, that's the only thing I can fuss about Great Lakes. Uh, they've gone to this uh, enjoy by date, which as far as I'm concerned sucks. Uh, you need to have a bottle on date. And if they want to put your enjoy by date on there underneath that, that's good. That's fine. But tell me how long the beer has been in the bottle. That's what I want to know. Is it a 2013 edition, 2014, 2016 edition? That's the information I need. So, all right, let's get on with this one and see how this one compares. Uh, commercial description says on this one, bid farewell to winter's cruel tyranny of the creamy, bittersweet, dark chocolate flavors and fresh raspberry tartness of Alberta Clipper Porter. Named for the intense winter storms that sweep the Midwest and Great Lakes region, making us all a little tougher and a lot colder. Uh, Alberta Clipper is the perfect treat to celebrate the return of mild weather and kiss those wintry winds goodbye at least for a while. Here, here, I'm all for that. <laughs> I'm not a fan of cold weather, guys. I'm really not. That's why there's a bunch of you that follow me know I'm trying to uh, tidy up things here at the house and put the house on the market and, and move to Florida. But uh, you never know how that's going to go. It, it could happen this year, and then it could happen a year or two or three or five, and it may not ever happen. I'm not going to give my house away. So uh, once we get everything tidied up here and put it on the market for a while, if it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell. I'm not going to give it away. It's too nice of a place for me to give it away. So, that's how that's going to go. Uh, oh, a little side note. Uh, uh, I'm reviewing this on the... Ooh, what is today's date? Uh, today is Tuesday the... Hell, I'm not even sure. Uh, I'm trying to think of what today's date. I think it's the 20th or 21st. Ah. They all run together to me. When you work for a living, it's hard to remember what the damn day is. I do do it's Tuesday. So, uh, uh, we got some good news here uh, in, uh, in Roanoke. Uh, that Deschutes Brewery has uh, decided to build their brewery here. So, that's great news. I hope, uh, uh, I hope I get to taste some of their stuff that's produced here. But that is several years down the road before they uh, uh, get the brewery built and start distributing here. 
uh, or start releasing their beers here, but I did hear that they are going to start sending some of their beers here. They may even do a brew pub here before the brewery opens up. So, good news for us guys here on the East Coast that haven't been able to get the Deschutes beers here unless uh, somebody sends them to you, which I have had quite often. Uh, uh, some of my subs that live out there uh, in the uh, on the West Coast uh, uh, do send some of their beers out here occasionally. Their abyss is awesome. And I've had this fresh squeeze and the red chair and a bunch of other beers over the years that have been sent to me and I don't think the guys do a bad beer. So it's great news for us here in Roanoke that they're going to build here. A lot of uh, cities were uh, Asheville, North Carolina, and a lot of other cities that were, were, were trying to coerce them to uh, build in their location or their area. And Roanoke won. We won. So Yay, that's a good thing. All right, let's get on with this one. I read you the commercial description. Food pairings for this style since it's a porter. Cuisine is barbecue. Cheese is buttery breed. Good to Havarti Swiss. Goes well with your chocolate dishes, of course. Meat, beef, smoked meat, and grilled meat. Glass around a pint, back or not, tumbler, mug, style, side ale. I got my favorite glass today. And not recommended for extended salarings unless ABV exceeds average range, which this would be at 7. Uh, uh, Nine? Is that what I told you? Seven point nine? Seven point five. Actually, uh, Beer Abbott has it listed as seven point eight, and uh, Rank Beer has it as seven point eight. So they've given, they've changed it for this version. Uh, seven point nine is what I have on the bottom. No, seven point five is what I have on this bottle. Seven and a half percent. So that's going to keep for a while, guys. It, it, it should. I, I can't think of why it would not. Uh, all right, let's get the damn cap open on this one and see what it's like. I'm ready to let spring come in and winter get the hell out of here. Had enough of it. And let's see, we're going to try to generate a little bit of head on this one. Let's go down the center and see what we get here. Doesn't generate a massive head without an aggressive pour. About a finger of head over to the light and the sun is setting it's just about to go under underneath the mountains over there so it's fairly bright coming through the window here uh, through the bottom I am getting some red ruby tinges around the thin part of the glass here it's not pitch black like a stout would be uh, but it's very reminiscent of what a porter is and should be so let's get a nose on it oh wonderful smell there rich roasted aroma uh, malt aroma yeah, a slight hint of some bittersweet chocolate, molasses maybe, and as it warms up, we might get some dark fruit in there. Very nice, and it does have a slight hot presence to it. it smells pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm getting the chocolate in the roasted malt overall. And I was on the impression this was a little bit lower ABV, but seven and a half percent. This is this is big boy. This is getting to the uh, the double uh, the uh, or imperial porter status. And as you can see, the head has dissipated. It's just barely covering the top of the beer now. So let's give it a taste. Cheers. Put it on the thin side. Not quite as uh, as bold as the uh, the Edmund Fitzgerald version of of uh, a dark beer is, but wonderful aroma. Just slightly subdued on the taste, in my opinion. But it's right out of the fridge, forty degrees. A light, a, a light version of the Edmund Fitzgerald, if you will. And the porters are usually a little lighter on the taste and, and everything. And that's how, that's how they came about, guys. Uh, but this is a seven and a half, so uh, it's getting on up there in the ABV. Usually your porters are a little, a little lower ABV than the stouts are, but this one is uh, on up there a little bit. So alcohol is. Uh, is definitely in here. I'm not getting it on the taste. It's very well hidden, very well made. And most of the beers that come from Great Lakes is. 
So, uh, but the taste is kind of subdued to me, uh, especially, you know, somebody like me that drinks uh, and reviews the beers that I do. Uh, it's not going to be in quite to the stout category. Uh, it's a little bit on the lighter side, a little thinner taste, uh, a little thinner mouthfeel. But still, you're getting the rich, roasty, chocolatey taste and maybe some uh, sweetness from molasses or or something like that, maybe some dark fruit, like I said. Uh, we'll let this warm up and sip on it for a little bit. I'm going to fire the grill up and cook a few burgers and uh, sip on this for a little bit. So we'll see where this one ends up. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. Been sipping on it probably about 30 minutes or so. Uh, went outside and threw the burgers on the grill. Sipped on this for a while and fired up a diesel wicked cigar and it's pretty damn tasty went very well with this so uh, may have overpowered it just a little bit it's a rich uh maduro wrapped cigar very tasty probably go well with a stout may even have to do that next might do a stout uh this is very tasty guys it's uh alcohol is very well hidden nice roasted malt a little on the lighter side as far as the mouth feel uh, a little on the thin side to me, but the porters are supposed to be that way, so all in all, it's pretty tasty. Uh, hints of uh, bittersweet chocolate and dark fruits and some molasses in there. Very nice. Very nice. Very very nice indeed, I may say. Uh, if you're expecting a, a really thick, rich uh, mouthfeel and all that, you need to step up to the stout. Uh, the Edmund Fitzgerald is a great example of a next of stout by these guys, and this is just a uh, this is my this is just a little brother as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, porter version uh, and a little bit thinner mouthfeel, a little bit less uh, thickness and chewiness in the beer. Uh, a great beer to have right before you drink an Edmund Fitzgerald. So. Uh, very nice. I enjoyed this one. So let's do the final chug on this one. Very well made beer. Wonderful notes on the aromas here. Wow. Great smelling beer. Oh, that's delicious. That is. Like I said, I consider this Edmund Fitzgerald's little brother. Uh, not quite as rich and thick and chewy and a uh, little bit on the lighter side uh, uh, but still got the alcohol seven and a half percent. It's gonna get you there. Uh, a little a little less filling if you will. <laughs> Great taste less filling. <laughs> Where have I heard that before? Yeah right. Uh, I enjoy this beer guys. As far as I'm concerned uh, uh, it is right, I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence between a B plus and an A minus, uh, but with all the information, of course it is an enjoy by day, but it is, it's, it's, it's a porter. It's not an IPA or a double IPA, so I wish they would uh, give us a bottled on date. That would be much better than an enjoy by uh, date here. So uh, that is the only thing I can fuss about. Everything else was really tasty. IBUs are here, ABV is here. And the date is here when they want you to have it by. And it's going to keep longer than July 14th of 2016. Uh, this beer is going to keep for several years if you so choose to do that. That's another reason why we want the bottled on date instead of an enjoy by date. So that way we know how long the beer has been in the bottle instead of when they want us to have it by. So let's make that decision, guys. Give us the bottled on date. Uh, with the information I've got on this, I I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. The A minus guys. If I was putting a numeric rating on this, it would probably be a 90. It is right on the borderline between an 89 and a 90. And the IBUs and the ABVs on here, and, and the date is on there. So we can just get these guys to switch over to a bottled on date. It would be much better. I, I think that's just my two cents. That's just my two cents. Uh, over to Beer Advocate, they say 88 in a very good range. And over to Rate Beer, they say 90. So. Uh, I, I'm kind of more in line with the 90 with the information I've got on here. Just wish, I, like I said, we'd have a vintage on there when it was put. When we, when the beer was in, put into the bottle. And then let us make that. If you want to give us both, 
uh, when it was put in the bottle, and when you think we should have it by, that's fine. But give us the bottle on date. Uh, that's what I want to see. Uh, I'm, I might even give it a little just a tad better grade. It might come up to a 94 or 95, uh, which would take it up into the uh, the 9 category if it got to 95. So, uh, very tasty though. Well-made beer, it is. Uh, Edmund Fitzgerald's little brother. I think I said that a couple times, maybe. So if you've had this one from Great Lakes Brewing, and they're out of Cleveland, Ohio, let me know what you think. I think it's very tasty. So glad we're getting these here in Virginia because they do make some awesome beers. So Let me know what you think, guys, if you've had it. And come on back tomorrow. I think I might dig out the stout. We'll see you then.